Let's talk about the markets in three minutes, Mark, and let's start uh, with the, the, the yield story and the labour market indicators that we've seen and that we're looking for from the United States. It is Jobs Day, of course. Yesterday, we got some indicators that the labour market is resilient, ADP and claims coming in uh, better than uh, or stronger than had been anticipated by, by many. What did that tell you? What does that set us up for when it comes to the jobs report? So I think the most important one to watch is claims in terms of its high frequency, and that is nowhere near showing recession signs yet. The market is still hot. Now, obviously, all the other ones are a little bit more backward looking, but they become very important because everyone watches them and Fed watches them. Uh, so I think non-farm payrolls, it has a relatively uh, OK indicator from ADP, and that suggests there's upside surprise today. The even more backward looking data we got this week was jolts, but that's even more important, those kind of job openings out there. They're all telling the same picture, though. The jobs market in the US, sure, it's cooling, but it's cooling from just incredible heat. And therefore, it is still way, way, way too hot. And I think that is the picture today. Now, the only catch to all this is that surely everyone must be seeing the data. And therefore, the whisper number is definitely got to be higher than the official forecast on Bloomberg. OK, I mean, is there, is, there's still this disconnect, though, isn't there, between the markets focusing on the cooling elements of the labour market and inflation data and the Fed continuing to focus on the resilience and the strength of the labour market. And, and that maybe leaves markets vulnerable to, to, to a stronger print today. Yeah, well, we used to have this mantra, as my, my colleague Garfield Reynolds said, don't fight the Fed. I think we've forgotten that, even though the last couple of years would have been the best lesson ever that you should never, ever fight the Fed. Because at the start of the pandemic, when supposedly the world was collapsing, the Fed turned markets around. And then when they started tightening, that turned markets back lower last year. Do not fight the Fed. And at the moment, the Fed are being very, very consistent that they want to, they're not going to be complacent on this inflation fight. And at the moment, wages are rising at more than double the pace of their inflation target. And so, yes, absolutely, Anna, I think there's a very asymmetric uh, setup for today. Uh, obviously, I don't know which way the data is going to come in, but I think that if we get an upside surprise above the whisper number, then I think yields can really, really rock it, and so can the dollar. Whereas I think if we mm. get a bit of a miss, then yields won't fall much. OK, right, so that's the asymmetric uh, positioning in markets. Uh, talking about the inf drivers of inflation, we've seen a big tick up in gas prices in the Eurozone on that benchmark and also particularly in the UK. But of course, this coming from, uh, from, a, from an asset that we know, a commodity that is very volatile and has been recently. We'll get Eurozone inflation data at 10 o'clock today. Uh, and a lot of the focus has actually been on the retreat in gas prices. So I suppose it's worth a mention that we have seen this big pick up. Yeah, look, I think it's been a very big bounce. But as you said, Anna, we've got used to volatility over the past year. The, the trend is very, very clearly lower since last summer in gas prices and in tremendously lower. In fact, when you put a chart of the last year, as you can think you can see on the screen now, you don't even see the tick up in prices recently. So I think the, the CPI print we're going to get today out of the Eurozone will probably still be a miss on the downside again. But it does show that the inflation battle is not over yet. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we've got natural gas features on the on the screen there. But if you look to the eurozone benchmark, we're down at 72 euros or so. Uh, and given we've been up at the sort of mid 300 levels, uh, it's uh, yeah, you're right, not showing up as as an uptick particularly. Remember, you can get up to date analysis and insight from Mark and the rest of the markets live team. MLIV Go is the function to use on your Bloomberg terminal.